Hey crafty friends, I'm Amanda Stevens with Pear Blossom Press and today I'm going to show you how to install one of our candle lights so that you can make a beautiful card like this that when you press the light it stays on until you blow it out. Isn't that cool? Let me show you how to put it together. You're going to need a candle light. These come with batteries. If you haven't seen them before, you can just grab them, open the batteries, they slide in from the side like this, and then the button is down at the bottom. When you push that button, the light comes on at the top, and then watch. Blow it out! <laughs> it's pretty fun, right? Let's do it again. So just blow it out. All right, now I've done a lot of the work, um, so I'm gonna show you the other ingredients that we need. I've got the PB Press Stamp and Die Set, some of our world's best foam tape. It's double thick, three millimeters. You need that uh, height for the battery. And then I've got the Candle Shop dies from Tim Holtz. I've already assembled the tall skinny one in here. Um, and I've even cut out the flames and attached them. I'll show you that panel in a second. The sentiment comes from the holiday words. All, all of the uh, pretty stuff on top is Tim Holtz. So I've gone ahead, I cut out three layers, glued them together, and then I cut out two more layers, and I cut off the M, because that's where it's gonna overlap the candle. So the, uh, the rest of the word is a little bit thicker, so that when I glue it on, it'll all be level. Did the same thing with bright. The uh, florals are from the Funky Festive set. And then the background is embossed with the Sparkle 3D embossing folder. Now let's talk about this panel. I've already prepped most of this. Uh, it is three by six because I wanted a, a mini slim line. I've already gone ahead and cut out the window and glued the flames on. Now you see there's a black panel cut slightly smaller and it has a hole in the top. That is just gonna work like a blackout curtain. And then in between, I've got a piece of yellow vellum. And then I actually did cut a hole through the white panel on top with our largest teardrop die in the PB Press stamp set. Uh, that just creates the window for the light. I would have used one of the Tim Holtz ones, except there's four flames on one die, so it would have made a really weird window. Uh, so after I cut the regular one, I glued the other vellum flames on top, and they're just colored red and yellow. Now let me show you how to stamp the word push so that you know that it's in the right position. I've got, again, that PB Press stamp set. I grab the word push out of it, and you can see I've just put the panel into my stamp positioner. I've got my light in place. I know I want the button off to the left side, and I'm putting the LED up on top of the window. And then I can take that little tiny stamp, and this is it's a little tricky because the button is small. <laughs> You're dealing with a small stamp on a small little button. Uh, so you kind of line it up, and then when you close the lid of your positioner, you can pick up the stamp, and then that way it's ready. You can move the light out of the way, ink it up when you cl and close the door, and it's stamped in the perfect spot. All right, so I've clearly already done that. It's embossed in gold to match the rest of the card here. And then uh, the card base itself is three and a quarter by six and a quarter, just because that's my favorite size. <laughs> um, and I put that pearl paper on top again. Okay, so the way the candle lights work is there is a little microphone underneath the LED. And that microphone has to hear you blow on it in order to turn off. So in a, a large panel like this, we're going to need to poke a little hole into our panel so that airflow can get to that microphone. It doesn't have to be perfectly lined up. Originally, I thought it did, but it doesn't. <laughs> and the more we play with these, the more we discover about how we can make them work. So in order to figure out where I want to poke that hole, I'm going to glue the candle in place. And this way, I know that I don't accidentally like poke the hole in the the white panel somewhere and then cover it up with the candle and then have to poke it again. So I'll glue the candle in place and then we can put the light right back on top again. And then now I know I need the hole to be somewhere just off to the left or the right of the top of the candle there, the candle light. And so I decided near the wick, just off to the right side is where I would poke my hole. And I just used a, a punch. You can use a handheld punch if, if it reaches. Or you can even use a pokey tool. Okay, so the hole is in our panel. 
now we need to stick the light to the back of the panel. So I'm going to use some double stick tape here. This is from Trinity Stamps. It's really nice because it has a little bit of wiggle room. There, It's their rip and stick tape. I put it right on that battery clip because for me it's easiest to kind of line it up from the back side. I can press the button and make sure that the light is lined up behind the window perfectly and that the word push is over the button. And then once it's in place, I'll give it a squeeze where the battery is, and that allows me to stick it down. Now we're going to build a little bit of a channel for that air uh, to, to get to the microphone. So I'm taking that double thick foam tape. Um, if you don't have double thick, just use two layers of regular so that you're the same height as the battery. You don't want a, a bump from the light. And then we're going to get pretty close um, to to either side of the light without covering the hole and without covering that circle, that, that window. And you can see I'm kind of filling it in there so that when I blow through that little hole, the air is going to be forced to kind of st stay in that channel and make sure that it gets to the microphone without escaping. So you see how I've kind of made a little box? And the reason I'm using that black sheet of paper is because this box around the light, so close to that light, with light color paper, you would get shadows from the foam tape. And it would make kind of like a, a box of light, <laughs> which wouldn't be as pretty. So I used the black paper behind it, just kind of like a blackout curtain. And look, one of the cool things about this tape is that it's repositionable for 30 minutes becomes permanent overnight. Uh, anyhow, <laughs> once we've got our foam tape there, and you can see I just added some extra around the sides for support, I'll pull off the release paper, which releases very nicely, I might add. <laughs> um, and then we can stick it to our card base. I like this. It's so pretty, right? All right, and then we're going to give it a little test, make sure that that channel works, and it does. And now all we're going to do is finish decorating the card with those um, festive pieces and the sentiment. I will glue those down. And then I also, I really like to add some gems for a little bit of extra sparkle. It goes really nicely with the gold paper. And our card is finished. Before I show you this in action one more time, let me show you a bonus card. Okay, so I used all the same supplies, except instead of a candlelight, this one uses a one light. And the one light only stays on while you push the button. And I cut a little trap door here so you can see. This is actually our one light, one of the XL ones, the longer ones that come in the um, halo light combo. We just nestled them in there. They just snap right out. And that pack actually makes six different light up cards. Okay, so there's our one light versus the candlelight. And you push the button and watch. So fun, right? <laughs> These are awesome. All right. Thanks for watching. If you want to make a card like this yourself, all the supplies are listed down below. And if you're new to the channel, feel free to click like and subscribe. And I'll see you again soon with another video.